Welcome back to Ion Radio and the 2024 Road to Adepticon series. Hello, everyone. I'm Ken, and joining me tonight are the judges for the Star Wars Armada World Championship. On our panel, we have Dennis, Lewis, Allen, and Fox Omega joining me. So, hey, guys, how's it going tonight? Excellent. Yeah, I just came back from Wales, so I'm really tired, but I'm happy to be here. And Lewis, thank you. I know you're a couple hours ahead of us, so it's uh, got to be like one o'clock in the morning, I think, your time. I, exactly, yeah. Well, so thank you again for uh, uh, coming to us from the future and uh, be willing to spend a little bit of time with us. So uh, going around the table here, uh, and I'm just going to start from what's on my screen upper left and working my way around going to ask all you guys the same questions although before i do dennis welcome back because you were one of the judges uh last year and you're the head judge this year yeah uh i i got i got upgraded or whatever um but uh, derek couldn't couldn't make it due to obligations and so i i, I took his place um and uh and yeah so uh, me being involved with armada it's been known to happen occasionally so all right, so let's go around the room. Fox, I'm going to start with you. Uh, the three questions I'm going to ask, how did you come to play Armada? How did you become a tournament uh, a, a judge? Uh, and uh, what are you most excited to see and or experience at Adepticon? Yeah, so uh, you may have a lot of listeners who are familiar with my you know, background in Armada, but it may or may not. Uh, but I started around wave six, so right before or slightly after the the release of the Quasar um, and the the flotilla nerf, which it's my favorite part of that story because there was a, a game night, uh, a, a flight night where um, I leaned on the table and broke my Gazanti, and my opponent was like just reached into his bag and pulled out another one. I was like, oh, here you go, and it was because yeah, there you go, because it was right after the nerf, and he was he had like five of them, and I was like, what is going on? Um, so that's where I started out, um, uh, getting into TO as far as like worlds or in general, like organizing events. I leave that one up to you, but we are talking about worlds. So, uh, yeah. how about we go with that one? Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of my stepping up into organizing tournaments, um, Alan can actually share this, the, a similar experience post COVID, um, Alan did an excellent job of organizing a, a series of events in Texas. Um, and there were a lot of like the the more involved players who kind of stepped up to be involved in the organization and running the tournaments. And that was when I decided you know, it'd be a really good idea to kind of put my foot out there and um, and start running some of these things and help Alan and a lot of the guys out of Houston do some of this stuff. Um, as far as for Worlds, uh, a lot a lot of it came down to my company. I, I'm an area director for um a restaurant chain here in Austin and we've opened two locations in the past four months. And so like my capacity to compete and legitimately shoot for a ticket kind of diminished by October. And I just, by mid November, I was like, you know what, if there's a way that I could, you know, judge and still be here and be a, a legitimate part of the process, I would love to do that sign message. Uh, Dennis and, and Alan encouraged me to do that too. Uh, and here I am. And as far as what I'm most excited for, I know this was like the, the news was taken kind of in, in a mixed way, but being in a venue that's separated, I'm actually really excited about that because it's our venue, like it's the Armada venue. And, um, you know, we get to be together experiencing the game that we all love and really uh, cherish the community that we're in. And that's honestly the, the thing I'm most excited about. I'm also excited about skipping the registration line uh, because that was absolutely atrocious last year. So anyone who did not get your your pass mailed to you, I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I can feel the pain on that one. Having I've been going to Adepticon for decades, and sometimes that line can be a little interesting, uh, if not long. Uh, although I will say, if you are part of the stream team, you can get a badge real easy because we'll be there a couple days in advance and I know the guy that runs it. So um, <clears throat> can't do that for anyone else. Apologies. Uh, so Fox, thank you very much. And again, welcome to the to the program. Yeah. Uh, Lewis, you are next on the, the list. Same list of questions. How did you get into Armada? Uh, How did you become a TO? And what are you looking forward to here uh, at Adepticon 2024? 
So yeah, I guess a lot of people don't know me. Um, I'm in the Discord a fair amount, and I I I, I post a lot of questions because I'm a bit of a degenerate and I tend to stay up late anyway. Um, I actually I'm a bit of a baby to Armada. I I really got into it in September 2022, so after COVID, which I know, I know that's crazy for a few people. I, you see a lot of messages from people going, "Hey, you know, uh, we're still getting a lot of newcomers to this game despite like the lack of new product and stuff like that." So I, I keep seeing new faces all the time myself, and I'm like, "No, it's it's still going strong. It's cool." But as for how I got into Armada, I had a friend who he's really into board games, and I, I dabble. I've played some here and there, and there was a convention going on nearby. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll join you for this one. It's been a while since we hung out. And now I've had a past in like 40K and Kill Team and a few other games workshop things. So I'm not really a stranger to wargaming. And I've always seen Legion and X-Wing around. So when we actually got to that convention, I saw uh, AMG was set up there. And I saw a table there for Legion. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. You know, I wanted to get into Legion at some point. I'll go try that. Demo tables were completely full. So I looked over and the X-Wing tables were there. I'm like, oh, you know, X-Wing, that looks cool. It's very popular at the stores I've been in. I'll go play that. Demo tables were full. Uh, so I looked over and I've never seen Armada in my life. It was my first introduction. And I left that demo buying a starter set instantly. And... I own a bit too much now, and it's actually all in that same starter box that I've got, and it's a complete mess. Um, I, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. You said it's okay. all in that starter box. Do you go to the store with that same starter box? No, I have the smallest carry case in the world, so I can bring just about one list with me to a tournament, and if I forget anything, I'm I'm begging people for borrowing stuff. I'm, I'm terrible with that. Um, yeah, uh, so for how I became a TO, actually, um, it, it's all Dennis, really, that's pushed me into that. Um, we actually met in the most recent Endor tournament, uh, where I got matched up against him, uh, bet against him. And I think it was like a solid half an hour, 40 minutes before we even started the first match, because we got to talking and, you know, we were talking about the homebrew stuff I've been posting in the Discord and uh, you know, just just connected a bit like that, and then we got into the game, and, and I'm putting you on blast now, Dennis. But uh, I think we called it after the top of turn two because my super star destroyer had killed Foresight and Jaina's Light, and we re-racked and went again with a different game. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for calling you out on that one. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it was after a while. You know, he said, "Hey, you know, message me any homebrew you have." So I've, I've sent him a couple since then, and. I think it was uh, in the period between Christmas and New Year's, he sent me a message and was like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to find a person to judge for Worlds. And I'm, I was wondering if you're interested, if you got a ticket. I have not got a ticket. I keep facing James McCartney at events. So I go straight to the bottom of the list. Thanks, James and Reese and everyone else who's coming to Worlds. Um but yeah, that's that's how I've got it. I I'm definitely not as experienced at uh, you know TOing as the rest of the guys here. So you know we have a head judge. I'm probably like the lowly peasant judge that <laughs> mostly, hopefully for line of sight checks. But I keep getting called out now. I was sat in a game watching Matchy and uh, Large Package play, and all I heard out of one ear was "World's Judge, World's Judge, World's Judge." And I've made a few calls since then, which you know are very anxiety inducing. So I'll say that. And what am I most excited to see? Well, I've just brought up a few names. It'd actually be, it's finally good to put some names to some faces. Uh, our faces to names, fingers to whatever. Um, but yeah, there's all these people you see communicating constantly. And I'd, I'd actually like to meet them, you know. A uh, few people owe me drinks. I've not forgotten yet, Alan. You owe me a drink. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to meet people, honestly. Um, and it'll be my first time in America, so I, I don't know. Don't hurt me. Well, we are definitely looking forward to having you come over, and uh, you're going to be in the Chicagoland area. We've been having a rather mild winter, so uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. I mean, we have had about a 50, 60-degree swing uh, in the last couple of days. Now, it's Fahrenheit, so that's probably about 25-ish, no, mm -hmm. about 20, 22 uh, degree C. Uh, so uh, for all of our European watchers, uh, but um, 
it, it can vary here. So you're going to get at last Adepticon, we got snow and sun. So uh, go figure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's about par for the course here. I will say, uh, Lewis, the way you talked about it, it almost sounds like you lucked into Armada, but at the same time, like you, you lucked into the right one. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you really I, I mean, I have played both of those since then, and I don't prefer either of them to to Armada. So, I guess I did look into it. Yeah, <laughs> happy to. Well, we're definitely looking forward to seeing what rulings you've got, um, and I'm sure you will be fantastic. My guess is you will be better than I could be uh, as a judge. Uh, because mine would be pull a structural damage, move on. No, so, uh, Dennis, uh, we are uh, going to skip you for a second and get back to you. Alan, you're still a newcomer to the channel. So, uh, again, welcome. And let's uh, get your information on how you got into Armada, became a TO, and what you're looking forward to uh, at Adepticon 2024. Yeah, I got into Armada uh, via another YouTuber. Uh, Kravik. Uh watched one of his videos, uh, was hooked, bought a bunch of stuff off of uh, Facebook Marketplace, and then uh, got up enough courage to walk into the Dragon's Lair here in Houston and met Jay Palmini and Prism. Uh, played my first game against uh, Juan and learned why you don't take Fleet Ambush and Demo never activated. Uh, and from there, I was hooked. Uh how I got to be in a TO, like like Fox said, uh, during COVID, just after COVID, you know, we were trying to start up something competitive in Texas. Uh, so I brought up uh, our series that we have and kind of structured it and got it all set up and then was able to lean on Matt and Paul and Jason and Ian and uh, the other Jason and get the entire series functional uh, and get us up and running. And if I wasn't judging those, I was organizing them and then doing a mediocre in the tournament. Uh, and then the most excited thing I'm for is just like like Fox said, having our own space. I know some people were, were pretty down on it, but uh, I mean, we're kind of out of the limelight, but I'm fine with being out of the limelight as long as we get to have a good time with it. So uh, we don't need the light shined on us, on us if we're as long as we're having a good time. Actually, I kind of like the idea that we're going to have our own space. We won't get necessarily squashed. We're going to have more room to play, and I think it'll be a little bit more relaxing. Plus, I have heard we might have carpeting to stand on instead of solid concrete floors. So that's a win, guys. Hey, or a tank. Will we get a tank this year? So I've been told that tank is not going to be in the wow. uh, the uh, demo hall, not the demo hall, the dealers hall uh, <laughs> this year. It was kind of a one time thing, and and but that that's a whole different story for another podcast. Uh, Dennis, uh, you will have uh, you'll have your own internet connection. So even if the main event goes down, we should stay up. Right? I, equally true. Uh, you know, I won't have to share bandwidth. Although I I'm, I was running some stats last year, we weren't using. Uh, what we had. So uh, clearly that means we need to run more streams uh, through the channel and do more games. Uh, so uh, <laughs> as, as much fun as that would be to uh, go ahead and do multiple games, I need a significantly larger crew. But anyway, speaking of a larger crew, head of the judges here for Worlds in 2024, Dennis, welcome back. You've got, uh, like you said, a little bit of an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to respond to that, honestly. I mean, it's true, you know. Um, uh, it, it's kind of nice. Um, I will admit, and I'm not, uh, uh, it, almost not, because Derek did, he, last year, he was kind of just dealing with the volunteer stuff. Um, and so I was kind of heading up at, at uh, Armada, but he still would, he still came in and uh, he organized the prizes. Um, that was most mostly him, and then did some other stuff. So um, I won't. I won't have him to. Uh, I can't call him when some when someone asks some inane thing that only he would know. Um, so that'll be fun. And I am genuinely looking forward to that, actually. But well, it sounds like the buck will stop with you, Dennis. So my hope is uh, you don't get anything too crazy. Uh, or uh, something that you'll have to dig through 16 manuals and eight uh, different uh, errata versions to find the right answer for. Or the, the secret third thing, I just make it up. 
<laughs> I can just make it up. What are you gonna? You know, you can't. You can't say anything. <laughs> well, you heard it here for, first, folks. Uh, so we're we're gonna make up rules on the fly. No, we're just kidding. This is a good panel of uh, of judges. I've had an opportunity to talk to all of them, both online through discords and things like that, and of course, a little bit before the program. And I'm sure I'll be talking to some of you afterwards. Uh, but this is a part of the program where I get to now uh, throw a couple questions out and then let any of the four of you guys make a couple decisions on who wants to answer it. Uh, maybe you all have a story uh, or or they're just let's have some fun with this, right? So the first question that I'm going to ask kind of goes right off of what Dennis was saying. What is the craziest ruling you've ever had to make? I've, I've got a good one, actually. Um <clears throat> I was uh, TOing a tournament here in Austin and I had a matchup where someone was flying an SSD with uh, Palpatine, the old Palpatine overload pulse combo, right? So they go first and they overload pulse a Venator. Um, and so the Venator has all exhausted defense tokens. Um, and uh, in the shot pulls a crit and the crit is faulty countermeasures which says you cannot spend exhausted defense tokens. So Palpatine cannot is a powerful word in Armada. And so the Venator now gets free reign to shoot at the SSD with no uh, recourse from Palpatine because he cannot spend defense tokens because of faulty countermeasures. It was incredible. Like, and everyone at the table was like, wait, is that real? Is that really how that interacts? And I was like, I mean, this crit helped him out more than anything he could have possibly played for. So uh, that's probably the most wild occurrence I've had happen where we all had to stop and go, wait, what? Is that is that right? But You know, Armada is one of those screwy games where every once in a while a crit is pulled or an interaction comes out that winds up being to the benefit of the person that was just attacked. Uh, and that, that's a great highlight of one. I love that story. Uh, I'm really glad you told me that one. Uh, anyone else have a good fun story and things they've had to uh, to uh, judge on? I mean, Fox has already taken the cake, uh, but I think he baked it ahead of time. So I've, I've not really got a crazy one, but it, it's crazy how often it's popped up since I had to answer it on the spot in that it, uh, watching that matchy and large package game, which was how do Exegos interact with start of squadron phase effects? Um, and I think it was specifically Mart they were dealing with uh, who has to activate and deploy a mine there. Um, and I had to go and quickly look this one up because I didn't know off the top of my head. And it's all of the first players' stuff activates first at the start of the squadron phase, and then all of the second players' stuff uh, can be before or after the Exegorfs are activated. And over the past weekend in Wales, while I was playing games there, not TOing, it came up another not once, not twice, but three times during Asteroid Tactics with multiple different people. And I, thankfully, I had that one rattled off the top of my head because no one else knew the answer there, so... But it's crazy how often that one popped up already. I'll say on, on what Lewis said is like Armada is one of those those games where if you play it uh, casually, I, guess, I don't want to say casually, but not as a judge, I guess, if you're not also a judge. There's a lot of things that you just kind of don't think about of like the specifics of how things interact. But once you become a judge and you have to have answers to all these things, you realize like some of it just doesn't make any sense. I'll even be honest. But um, it, it, even if it does make sense, it's like weird. Um, I will never commands are still incomprehensible as to how they technically function. Um, and uh, Exegorths too. Exegorths are uh, very, very strange in just how they technically work uh, when you put them on the table. We kind of covered this one already. This next question where I was going to ask you guys, what's one rule you guys generally see that uh, is constantly played wrong or or something you expect to come up? So clearly Exegorths are, are one of them. Uh, there are other ones that you guys feel, especially since this year, we're going to have a lot of winners of store uh, tournaments. So they may not be as adept in, in tournament play as some of the folks that are constantly at the world qualifiers or back in the days uh, did regionals and whatnot. So these might just be uh, used to their small local metas. What do you think are a couple of rules that some folks uh, that may not be used to this should know? The, the Ahsoka 
uh, interaction is always the, the Ahsoka time step. That's always top of the list. Um, thankfully, last year we actually uh, Simon actually said that to, to this question last year. Thankfully, last year, at least so far as I know, that didn't come up. Um, but it is still like I was just saying. It's one of those things. Just it, like it's very strange technically, um, and that it's after. I don't even remember how it works. That's how strange it is. Like I can't remember off the top of my head. I have to look it up. But um, so yeah, I would I would expect that potentially. We had a we had a good one actually earlier today um, that uh, Lewis assisted with, but obstacle movement with with the word towards, I expect to be as it always has extremely controversial. Um, I've seen top level players play it just so egregiously because there's space one way or another, or a TO rules it one way or another, and the wording is admittedly like not as clear as it could be. Um, and so I, I expect um, there to be a lot of weird like questions. Like, can I, can like the question posited today was, can you, can you force rotate a, a whale to off the board? Like, and then make, make it so it doesn't move. Or can you even move an obstacle off the board? And we're like, what, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you doing this to us? You know, but um, yeah, yeah, I expect that not. one to come up. So, yeah, no, towards is 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 very strange because there's. I was just thinking about this, funny enough, like not like an hour ago, um, because towards has an implicit at least distance in it. Um, so it's not just you're moving towards a thing; you're moving towards a thing at least uh, distance one, I believe it is. And then also the way that at least distance one is done is not like you think you'd. It's like you have to move the whole distance. Um, but if I'm remembering correctly, it's not. It's just any part of the token has to move at least distance one. But the whole token can be like part of the token can be within the distance one band. And so it's just, it's it, it's not intuitive with how most tabletop games do at least distance. And then the the fact that at least distance is implicit in the towards is also really confusing. It's just like it, none of it makes sense. It's all it's all broken. Whales need to not exist. That's not true. But they need to exist in a different way. <laughs> I think we just need a slightly different definition on towards, uh, but that that's me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. You're the experts. So that's that's uh, actually probably the, I was being hyperbolic. That is actually what, what needs to happen. Towards just needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but you know, it's whatever. It, it also doesn't help that they see... picked the worst diagram in the rule book. Like the, the diagram is just, isn't great to explain it, but Alan, go ahead, man. Yeah, and I was going to say, uh, I'm hoping we see, we saw it last year at the very end. Uh, Fox and I were actually sitting next to each other and we, we were on our phones looking up the rules for uh, mutual tabling because uh, <laughs> we we knew we knew the guy that we were rooting for because he's from Texas. We could just see it that he did not remember that rule and we looked it up and both of us were like, please, please do not mutual table him. And he did it. Uh, so I'd love to see some more mutual tablings. Uh, we can remind people how how they work because not everyone knows because it's so rare. Uh, so if if you know round three this year we see another mutual tabling to uh, to declare the uh, the winner, that would be would be awesome. Yeah, he was he was going for more ion storm points, wasn't it, or something like that? And we were like, it's not going to matter in a mutual tabling; it's all second player. That was crazy. I remember mm -hmm. that. That, yeah. that had he was to trying to set up to get more points and worlds. <laughs> It was awesome. I think. I think. Uh, I mean, none of the judges knew what happened either, too. So after it did, we all had to scramble to figure out what actually happens. Because I, I, honestly, in my all of experience at Armada, that's probably the first time that I've seen it ever happen. It's. It's not. It's not very common. So no one. No one on the team knew. Do knew, knew what happened. Yeah, I'll if everyone could play like real but... by the book Armada this year, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> we don't need any extra rules questions. I, I'll I'll do some line of sight stuff, but you know, the rest of it's going out the window. Just remember, folks, disc caps is before you reveal your uh, command dial to activate the ship. So, uh, just just pointing that one out. That's the one I know. So, uh, an intel officer is after your first roll. MC thirties are the best ship in the game. Um, that's the other rule that I'm going to throw out there. And uh, 
the the winning combination will be Emperor Palpatine with Director Izard on a uh, interdictor combat refit. Okay, there we go. So moving on. I mean, we can we can collude to make whoa. this happen if you want. I mean, you know, whoa, we, whoa! <laughs> Let's talk about all of that. Holy cow! Who's uh, bringing that to worlds? <laughs> it's my super secret list. I know we were in hot. Cannot give that away. We were in hot takes. Uh, I, I did that mostly just because I wanted to see Fox's reaction to that after a conversation earlier with Dustin. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so going on to the next question, uh, we've had a couple chats on some uh, crazy rules, some interesting things people should know, uh, but we're talking about the game. Let's talk about you guys. What are things that as players coming into worlds, whether it's LCQ and they're competing for those uh, handful of spots available to get into day one, or they already have an invite to go to day one, what are things that the judges or that the players should know about you guys, the judges, whether it's experience or, or whatnot, again, open forum, throwing it to the panel. Well, I could, um, um, you know, we just, sometimes we're going to rule against uh, you to you know out of your uh, favor and it, it it definitely feels bad in the moment but it's like you know we 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 gotta you know we can't change the rule because of who's playing um just to make someone not upset um so don't get upset i guess um but uh there's there's tons of mechanisms that, that we have where um you know if you need to take a walk uh that's totally fine uh you know we've haven't had that happen yet actually but um we still like if someone just needs to walk away from the table for a couple minutes like that's totally fine we'll we'll totally um allow that and and be permissive of that um now that said i'm going to say it, i guess it kind of contradicts what i just said uh but we are also going to uh, try to keep the schedule pretty well um and so i will actually uh, just state the scheme and we kind of figured this out last year and we're going to keep doing it at uh, 15 minutes remaining in the round, we're going to announce um, that 15 minutes are left, and you cannot start another round after that announcement. And that's just meant to to speed the game up. It's just meant to, you know, uh, make sure that we stay on schedule. We don't care if the next activation uh, that would be on the next round wins the game for the other player. It's, it's the time. Um, and uh, like I said, we just, we want to keep, we want to really keep to the schedule. Um as much as we possibly can so i'd say i think i'm going to try to speak for everyone um y'all tell me if i'm wrong but uh i think as a team our primary focus is the integrity of the game um that you know like like dennis was saying there are rulings that happen that we're, we're not going to make any ruling to make someone like learn a lesson or you know what this is why i'm ruling this way like you should learn not to crumple up your list before you turn it in like that's not that that's not remotely on any of our minds that would be a crazy thing to think um we care about the integrity of the game um and we want to see like we want worlds to be treated with the the gravitas that the, the name of the competition itself um you know carries with it within that and also riffing on Dennis, what he just said, but th there's some grace in there. Like one of the cool things that we saw in the top eight uh, on day three of Worlds last year was the amount of grace that was lended to to the, their opponents. Um, and we did have someone walk away. Like there was someone who had to take a moment and like, you know, something happened that didn't go their way. And that, you know, they, they took a lap and they walked it off and you know, gathered themselves and had some grace for themselves before they continued so that we could continue the integrity of the game, you know, um, getting too caught up emotionally. Um, like we're going to have a lot of fun being in our own venue and enjoying each other's company and all that jazz, but getting caught up in your own emotions. I think all of us are on the same page there. Like we, we, we don't want anyone to feel bad like that's not our goal our goal is never to make anyone feel bad we we care about the integrity of the game we want everybody to have a good time and sometimes that means you know things don't go your way and we're sorry but also you were wrong so <laughs> i'll do uh some some housekeeping uh we so we're, we're, we're staff there we're not just judges so if you do not pick up after yourself. We will have to pick up after you. And I, 
I do enjoy hanging out with you guys and gals. So if you can pick up after yourself so we can go out to eat with you when the event's over uh, or just hang out with you, I'd be much appreciated. Uh, and the other one, you know, kind of piggyback on Fox's point, if if we usher you away from a table, uh, it's not because you did anything wrong. It's that you might have potentially said something that might change the state of the game for the two people playing. So if, if you can keep a good distance away from the tables when you're talking about the game, if you're just going to stand there and be quiet, you can be as close as they'll let you be. But if you want to talk about the game, please get out of your shot. Uh, we, we saw it at, we see it at local tournaments. We see it at the world open qualifiers. No one does it on purpose, but it does happen. And that goes back to the integrity. We want to make sure that, uh, no one, even a table that's still playing while you're done, is is getting information they shouldn't get. No, that's definitely good information to have uh, you know, to all the spectators that are here. Uh, it's one thing when if your opponent tells you, "Hey, you you missed this," that's okay. You know, that's just good sportsmanship. But if you've got a couple people that aren't playing, they're just watching the game, and you're telling, "Oh man, that's that's clearly an arc," or uh, "Hey, this is uh, you're playing that one wrong. It's played like." The, you can't do that. That's actually against the tournament rules. Uh, you're listed as a spectator. Uh, can't do that. Uh, so uh, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's important to, to point out, of course, um, especially about score as well. People talking about the, the standings, although I think uh, we can hide them before the round ends anyway, but nonetheless, um, I, I did want to point out because Fox uh, mentioned the venue and that reminded me um because alan and, and ken kind of said like we're going to be all by ourselves we're not entirely by ourselves um there's also bolt action uh song of ice and fire i know there's probably other stuff too um in that building so we're not just like shoved up in the corner there's other things to do but um it's definitely more um a lot less people um than than the main the main hall and there will be carpets from the, so long as i'm uh, aware so that will be nice so now that we've talked about things that people should know about you guys that, you know, uh, the judges aren't here to make your lives miserable. They're here to just, like you guys said, keep the integrity of the game, uh, keep the game on time and moving along and, you know, help out with rules. And of course, what Lewis really wants to do is help with uh, determining line of sight uh, and are you an arc and uh, is your shot obstructed? But from your guys' perspectives, being a judge versus being a player what do you guys look at in terms of your experience that you're expecting to get at Worlds? Is it going to be different from when you've played in the past, whether it's at Worlds or a different tournament? Like, clearly it's going to be, but I, I'm curious to get kind of your guys' feelings on how that's going to be different and how you guys are going to enjoy that aspect of it as opposed to playing. Um, so my, uh, my experience in, in this regard is kind of uh, perhaps a little abnormal because I think at this point I've actually judged more than I've played um, the biggest tournament that I went to was, uh, it was like 40 players, which isn't, you know, that's not insignificant, but that's not, you know, like worlds or anything. Um, and so I've never actually like gone to worlds to play. I've only ever gone to worlds to judge. And so uh, almost a little bit, like I don't have an exact idea as to what the difference might be, but at the same time, like, I, I do feel like I have a, a little bit where, um, and Simon actually last year said this and I kind of, uh, stand by it a lot where it's just like, it's. Like our chaos is before the event is in between the rounds, but once the rounds are going, like we can just kind of sit back and relax, and it's 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 quite nice. Um, and and then that's when the players get to 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 worry and and think about stuff, um, and we don't have to do that, uh, which I always do look forward to. Not thinking is is a lot of fun. Yeah, I think uh, and at Fox, you know, pretty much the last same thing last year we. Uh lcq and then failed to get out of it so we just hung out and enjoyed ourselves the rest of the time uh, i think that's a, the biggest difference for me as a, a to or judge is i get to interact with the entire field instead of just focusing on my game and meeting two or three people maybe the people around me uh, as a judge you interact with everybody period uh and i encourage you know the players just if they're, you're not playing a game and one of the judges is there, chat with them. Uh, we're we're there to meet you guys. I know for me and Fox, that's one of our uh, big things is we like hanging out with the community. Uh, even when we 
I think the the Texas Open Series, Fox and I were the only two people that are not playing. Uh, just hang out, have fun, and we have to worry, to Dennis's point, we have to worry about the event. So, you know, we're less concerned about all that and how are we going to manage to pull the team championship off on the same day as uh, the top four playing, or top eight, sorry. Uh, those are things I'm worried about because, you know, that's a, a lot more people playing on that day. The day before, I think we have sector fleet. So different different things to worry about, but definitely want to interact with the community. You actually bring up a point that I'm not sure everyone uh, that's coming to Worlds knows that you guys are not judging just the one event. Uh, you guys are involved in everything. So sector fleet, team tournament. Uh, so, you know, th there's a lot of work that you guys are really doing uh, that may not be recognized, uh, not necessarily uh, on purpose, but just one of those. I didn't think that the judges would be doing that. They're here to do Worlds. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to speak for the entire community. Thank all four of you guys for doing this, because this is a lot of work. Uh, and I'm sure it's got to be stressful at times. We were sitting there piecing everything together for the various different rounds, uh, making sure that the matchups are, are kosher and and then moving on and keeping the game paced and and going on. So um, definitely a lot of work for you guys. And it, it's much appreciated by the entire community. Uh, definitely all the players there. I think uh, my, my experience coming in uh, isn't going to be much different than last year. Like Alan said, uh, he and I were walking around the, uh, the play area and interacting with people. Um, I think I made more calls than Dennis and uh, and Simon did, anyways, last year. So you know, I'm probably going to end up being the yeah, same okay. thing. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, Alan's 100 right. I think he and I have the same ethos here. That um, you know, my, my big thing is the community and what we can do to support it and meeting people like and um there were a lot of people i didn't get to meet because i was playing in the lcq and then there was just so much happening uh in the days after so i'm excited to um meet those people that i didn't get to meet and then you know meet friends and hang out and um judge them officially uh, I think for me, the expectation on being a judge versus a player is I've, I've not really judged a major event of this size at all. Um, so usually when I'm a player, I'm always looking around anyway because I want to see how everyone else's games are going. I want to you know, be on everyone's table at the same time, looking at what they're doing and getting inside their mindset. And sometimes, sometimes I struggle on focusing on my own game because of that, and I'm, I'm really guilty of that. But I, I feel like this gives me a bit of an opportunity to kind of do that and live armada like through people via proxy um and i don't have to commit to an hour of playing the game while i'm doing it what i kind of envy for you guys as judges is is almost exactly that where you guys do get to see different fleets in action different takes on uh the metas that's out that are out there and you could have two identical lists given to two completely different people and they fly them each differently uh, i'm stuck pretty much watching two fleets around uh if i get lucky i get to peek around a table and, and see another two for a minute or two uh so this it, this is going to be kind of a fun experience to get uh, your guys uh input so please uh after the the games are over talk to the judges between games if you're done talk to them uh these are guys that know armada uh they're folks that are happy to be there uh, i mean they're not playing they're judging they want to make sure that everyone has a good time and and these guys know uh their stuff um so again talk to them say hello to them uh, pick their brain, get some ideas on crazy rule interactions, why decimators are awesome. Uh, and <laughs> so throw, throwing this one out uh, to everyone, final thoughts, uh, things you uh, uh, haven't, we haven't covered or things you want to say before we uh, wrap tonight up, moving into Adepticon, which if uh, as of today's recording, I think is only 16 days away so we're right around the corner well my final thoughts are i'm gonna get us back on back on track my final thoughts are um you know 
the the game has matured a lot in the past uh, three years. Like, you know, the Clone Wars were released and uh, the game was kind of thrown into a tizzy as everyone tried to figure out what was going on with those factions. Um, I've talked a lot about how in the past year since rapid reinforcements and then the, um, you know, the not the nerfing, but like the, the adjustments to the, the errata to the game. That's the appropriate word to use. Yeah. The errata to the game. Um, since then, like the game has settled into probably the most perfectly balanced situation it's ever achieved in the entire history of the game. What a remarkable moment for, you know, people like Lewis or people like anybody to be into the game and learn the system. Like it's at its best right now, even better than what it was at Worlds last year um, in just this one year. Um, especially with the maturity of the factions. Um, and so my final thought is, as a judge, I'm really excited to be a part of running that high of a level of competition. But two, I, I'm really excited to see what competitively this game has become uh, because it's it's honestly truly remarkable that this this game itself has become what it is at this point. Uh, I think anyone who's lived through any of the old phases where there was one thing that was broken to ship or flotilla spam or whatever, that we can all safely say that this is like, you can go into a tournament and have literally no idea what you're going to face. And that is significant. That's significant. So that's, that's my final thought. Nah, it will be have fun. This is a game. I mean, I, I, I know we're, a lot of us are super competitive. We want to win, and winning is fun. Uh, but have fun too. I mean, if you if you win and you didn't have fun, did you really win? So just just show up, have fun, uh, hang out. I know a lot of us are geeks, nerds, whatever whatever word you want to use. We're all there for the same thing. No one, no one other than the fox is going to judge you. So just just have some fun. You you said you wanted to judge people officially. <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do a judges panel, just so that you guys at home can know exactly uh, who is going to be walking around telling you what is in line of sight and what's not. Everyone's going to be calling for you, Lewis. So uh, you're going to have a lot of calls like that going on. So. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. Armada players are... Uh, it's a good group of people and a good community. Uh, and that's definitely shown through uh, the participation that we saw last year at Adepticon uh, at the various different tournaments, regionals, uh, the world qualifiers, and throughout the world. And I think it's one of the best things about this game is that we have so many different personalities, so many different cultures coming together to play one game. And really, uh, as Alan pointed out, we're all kind of in that same boat of geekiness, nerdiness, whatever you want to call it. We love Star Wars. We love strategic level games. Uh, and we're here to have a lot of fun and interact with the rest of the community. And I think that is one of the best parts uh, of this game. All right. So on behalf of all of our judges, I'm going to thank you all again uh, for watching us and the judges panel in our Road to Adepticon series. I also want to take this moment to thank our full panel of judges. So Fox, Lewis, Alan, and Dennis. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming on, sharing some of your thoughts. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to be talking for at least another hour and a half after the cameras stop rolling about all the wonderful things that Armada has to offer. So once again, everyone, I'm Ken, and we will see you at Adepticon.